focus on your breath, trying to stay with it all the way in, all the way out. Other things will come by, but you want to make sure that you maintain your focus. It's in the maintaining that this will grow. Otherwise, it's just the breath coming in, going out, keeping the body alive, and not doing much else. But if you stick with it, the mind gets a place to settle down. And as the Buddha said, there's no, there's no happiness aside from peace. In other words, there's no happiness unless there's a place where the mind can get settled. Our problem is that we try to find pleasure or happiness in different parts of the, our experience, but we just keep getting pushed out, pushed out. You focus on a part of the body, and after a while it starts getting painful, but you move, have to move around. You focus on things outside, people outside. First they're pleasant, but then they do things you don't like. So you're getting constantly pushed out. We'll come back in. It's, you can adjust things in the body so that it's comfortable for a while, and the mind can settle down. And when it's settled down, okay, then it can start seeing things more clearly, because otherwise all I can think of is, where am I going to get my next hit of pleasure? But here you can say, okay, now that I've got a sense of well-being inside, what can I do with that? This is where wisdom comes in. You realize that you like your well-being, other people like their well-being. If your well-being depends on their suffering, they're not going to stand for it. So the question is, how can you maintain your well-being in a way that doesn't harm anybody? This way the meditation spreads out into the rest of your life as you start looking at the ways you're looking for pleasure in life and the impact they're having on other people. How can you do it in such a way that it doesn't harm anybody? So as you're sitting here meditating, it's not just running away from the world. We're preparing the mind so it can deal with the world more skillfully, to give it the strength, to give it the sense of well-being it needs in order to, and the clarity it needs in order to see things clearly, what's right and what's wrong. And then the strength that you can do what's right. There's a lot of times when we know it's right, but we don't have the strength enough to do it. In that case, our knowledge doesn't do as much, do as much good. So you want the knowledge plus the strength. This is why when the Buddha taught the path, he didn't teach just right view. He taught all the other factors to strengthen it. So you can see what's right, you can make up your mind you want to do what's harmless, and then you can stick with it. You've got the strength to carry it through. So make sure you strengthen your mind this way. I mean, it's not just resting the mind, it's getting the mind sharper in its mindfulness, sharper in its alertness, with more energy for its ardency. And this way it can really make a difference. Otherwise, if you're just resting for a bit, it's like sleeping, and you come back out and you're just living your same old way again as you were before. But when the mind is rested in this way, it comes out and it's got new skills and it's got a new perspective. And that's how its benefits start rippling out through your life. <laughs>